Inside your flight controller is a very important chip. It is the IMU, or Inertial Measurement Unit, and it is the chip that contains the sensors that let the flight controller keep the copter in the air, most notably the gyro and the accelerometer, although some of them have additional sensors like a compass or a barometer or what have you. The IMU that is used in our flight controllers is always, uh, almost always, if not always, a chip from a company called Invensense, and it is the MCU 6050, 6500, or 6000. That's the, that's the model name for them. As you can see in this slide from an earlier video I did about different F3 chips, or F3 boards, it's an F3 flight controller roundup, the choice of which MCU chip is on the board matters, and you can pause the video right now and you can read this slide if you want more information. Okay. There has been some question over whether the fact that the 6500 chip has a worse noise spec actually affects flight. And I've done some testing, and my initial testing, certainly not completely comprehensive, indicates that a board with the 6500 chip can fly perfectly well, but you, you tune it a little differently. You may need a little less degain or a little more D-term filtering, but that overall it flies very well. And I said uh, you should not uh, reject a, a board like the Luminaire Lux because it has the 6500 gyro uh, or chip. You should not reject it. If you want that board, go buy it. V recently, Boris has actually switched over to a 6500 chip board and said, oh my gosh, my gains are, it flies terrible. My gains are off. And then he retuned his copter and he came back and he said, no, actually, after I retuned it, it flies fine. You just got to tune it differently. And by the way, I, I went, hmm, that's what I said. Awesome. I was always good when, when Boris agrees with me. When he first came out with his statement, I was like, oh my God, I said it was fine. And he now says it's terrible. Was I wrong? And then a few days later, he came back and he seemed, at least to my eyes, he seemed to agree with me. So whew, there's, that's a relief. But there's still this question of, of is the 6500 chip you know, is that is it good or is it bad? What should we do? Because Motomoto Moto said, no, I'm putting the 6000 in my Cyclone board. I'm not using the 6500. Hmm. And this came across my radar today, and I want you to know about it. It's this video from uh, Ben Williamson on the Stanton Frame Owners. And I have a link to this, by the way, on my page, The Drone Racing Engineer. So you can just go there and click through. And he's done some research on this chip, but he's had real problems with it. And he found that if he looked at the yaw gyro for the 6500, when the motors were spinning, the overall noise level was kind of indistinguishable from the 6000 or the 6050, which is, which it, the, the spec is like twice as bad, but it's still pretty good overall. So the fact that it's twice as bad doesn't mean that much, right? But he found that there were these strange spikes in the gyro periodically, and they sort of came out of nowhere. It's this guy, actually. Max Van Dalen is the one who seems to be doing the actual testing. It comes out of nowhere, right? And he says uh, the base gyro noise generated is pretty good, but it spontaneously generates bursts of massive rate spikes. And this is really interesting to me because I've seen black box logs that some of y'all have submitted where I think I'm seeing spikes that could match up with what we're seeing here. So if you're running a board that has the 6500 chip in it, like the Luminaire Lux, or you're running a board that has the 9250 chip in it, like the new SP Racing Mini, uh, the 9250 is the 10 degree, 10 DOF version of the 6500, which is a 6 DOF. Okay, so if you're running either of those uh, chips, uh, then and you, if you have black box logs with these spikes in it, maybe this is your cause. And what he says is, he wonders if the 6500 has been designed specifically for low vibration applications like phones and games. And they've emailed him in a sense with a description of that behavior, uh, and they haven't gotten an answer back yet to see. But his recommendation is to soft mount the gyro. And what he's saying is that... He says the 6500 is not really that much worse than the 6050, but the 6500 is intolerant to high levels of vibration. And this is not mentioned in the data sheet. This is not a spec that is anywhere in the data sheet. So the 6500 may in fact perform worse than the 6000 or the 6050, not because of the noise spec, which is what everybody has focused on, doing no part, small part to my pointing it out. Uh, sorry if I've misled anybody. Uh, but the fact that the 6500 doesn't 
do well in high no high vibration environments. It saturates and it sends through these massive spikes of noise that isn't really there. And he says, in fact, they've got, Invincent recommends the 6000 and the 6050 for multi-rotor applications specifically and does not recommend the 6500. So what does this mean for you? Well, if you have a 6500 or a 9250 flight controller and it's flying wonderfully and you love it, don't worry, you're fine. You may just have a copter that has a low enough noise level that it's not affecting the chip. Enjoy. Fly. Forget, it, forget I even mentioned it. If you have a copter that has the 6500 60, or the 9250 and you are having weird gyro spikes, like tw twitching motors, and by the way, you can watch this video on his page and it shows, the it, it's just like a weird clicking in the motors, almost like a sync problem, okay? If you're having that happening or maybe even something worse, the workaround is to soft mount your flight controller. Now he's got a photo here where he uses foam tape and he said it fixed it completely. You, there are various ways of soft mounting it with foam tape, with moon gel, with, with uh, rubber bumpers or O-rings, any of that stuff, and it'll clear, apparently it cleared it right up. So, very interesting. I, I point this out to you guys because, well, I'm sure that many of you are eating this stuff up, but this is the first time when someone has definitively shown, in my, in my, to my knowledge, that there is a real like a real problem behavior that the 6500 evidences you can point to the 6500's noise spec and you can do Fourier plots like I did and blah 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 and you can like nitpick at the at the differences and say does it really matter and it, there's not really an answer maybe it does maybe it doesn't maybe you just run lower D gains but in this case we have a a definitively anomalous behavior the gyro is giving definitively bad spurious readings it is doing the wrong thing. It is not happy, and this will affect flight performance. So there you go. Thank you to Max Van Dalen uh, for this research, and for uh, and thank you also to the person who passed it on to me on RC Groups, who is Quad Racer ninety nine. Thank you, Quad Racer ninety nine, for pointing that out. I would not have seen this if you hadn't pointed it out, and now I'm passing it on to all my viewers, and I hope it's usual that it's useful, educational. And as always, happy flying. No matter what flight controller you've got, happy flying.